Hello everyone, this is Chris Cresence, and I have here uh, John Vickers, which needs no introduction, but I will have to introduce him anyway. He's a very famous uh, British Cypriot, I can call you a British Cypriot, right, by now. Uh, well, you can if you want. Singer, so, uh, songwriter, <laughs> actor, all kinds of uh, journalist, translator, everything. So tell us your full name again, and when did you come to Cyprus? Okay, well, you got the name right. It's John Vickers. All right. Uh, the Cypriot connection, though, I have no Cypriot blood in me at all. I mean, uh, I've been here for 43 years. I came in 1972, straight out of university. Uh -huh. And the reason I came here is that I had met my future wife, oh, wow. who is a Greek Cypriot. Uh, there you go. There's the connection the right there. University in England, you see. <laughs> so when I finished, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So we said, well, let's try Cyprus, which I did. And here I still am. And I just want to let, let everybody know, uh, in 1972, I believe it was, you had that show called Request Time on uh, CYBC Rick uh, yeah, Radio Channel 2. this is how I kind of two. became uh, famous, in inverted commas, and in fact, all these years later, I would say that at least maybe once a week, I will still meet somebody who Dementia. I have no idea who they are, but they will come up to me and say, excuse me, are you John Vickers? And I'll say, yeah. And they will then tell me, as you did earlier, mm -hmm. that they used to listen to me every night and you know send letters to me asking for songs for their. And just to reiterate to that the, the program was called Request Time, and you were working with a Lebanese, I believe, a journalist, and her name was Vicky Bishara. That's right, because this. And the show was in English and in Arabic, correct? It was in English and Arabic, yeah. uh, and originally. It was designed as part of what the Cyprus Broadcasting Corporation called its international program. Mm -hmm. So called because it was actually broadcast and heard throughout the Middle East. Exactly. It was known throughout, the, not just the Middle East, throughout Europe. I think they were listening to it in other places. No, no, well. I don't think they could get no? it quite so far away. But certainly Israel, Lebanon, Egypt, Syria, uh -huh. all, all, all those countries. And we were getting letters from kids. Yeah, I used to send a lot of them. I went to school in Terrasanda. All the boarding school the students were sending letters. Well, you see, what and we had our real radios, what, and then we would listen to the show all the time. You must have started, though. You must have started that. It probably was at least a year later, because originally uh -huh. that program was only for people outside Cyprus. And what happened oh, really? was that, yeah, so it must have been 73 then when I was. We knew that there were lots of people listening in Cyprus, but I think there was another program which was was kind of meant for them. But when the war in Lebanon took uh -huh. place, suddenly all the posts stopped. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, and so because we knew that people were, I mean, people were actually writing us letters and we were not using them. <laughs> so I, I, I said, listen, it's a shame because these kids are listening to us. We don't have any letters coming from Beirut right now. Mm -hmm. So until this kind of, you know, this business is settled, let's do this. And so we started playing songs for the kids in Cyprus who had been writing these letters. And of course, <laughs> You know, we never looked back in that sense because uh, at its peak, and this program went on for 17 years every oh, wow. night. But wasn't uh, it like a reunion show sometime in the 2000s? Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. in America, I heard about it. Yeah. What well, was I, that? Can you tell us more about that? I can. At its peak, uh, just to mention, we were getting, uh -huh. I mean, we were getting maybe, I don't know, 100 or more letters every day. I mean, it oh, was wow. that popular. Yeah, it was crazy. Because, I mean, one of the reasons, you know, is not necessarily to do with me or Vicky and what a great job we were doing. It was uh -huh. simply because, you know, there was no alternative. I mean, uh, there were two channels. Just to emphasize... There was to... one radio station uh -huh. in Cyprus and it had Correct. two channels and that was it, you know. So. And also just to emphasize, you were... Your guys were playing uh, European, American, yeah, British yeah, music, all the, yeah, we had all a, the we, hits. We, it was we, a really we, international we did the show. Top 20 show as well, and it was all this kind of thing. Yeah, which and people had a good taste uh, in <laughs> in uh, requesting. It was some good songs. <laughs> well, you know, everybody everybody you know, loved them. Everybody remembers the songs that were popular when they were teenagers. You know, oh, yeah. so now whether they were good or not is is a matter of no. Uh, we grew up with those songs. Trust me, they, they were all. Well, I have to say they that, all had a message for us. Listen, I mean, I grew up in. <laughs> The, in the 60s uh -huh. uh, with the Beatles, you know, and so to me, 60s and 70s music is, is actually, you know, even all these years later, it's probably still the stuff that I actually enjoy listening to most. Mm -hmm. However, having said that, I mean, I remember very clearly that my father 
you know, told me when I was kind of crazy Beatles fan at the age of 14 or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, well, oh, come on, what's this noise? They're not going to last, you know, this <laughs> kind of stuff. Uh, and of course, uh, I have to say also that when, by the time we, we finished the program, or I left the program in 1989, mm -hmm. and even then, kind of late 80s, I was starting to feel that this music and these songs did not say so much to me, you know, oh, as really? the older ones. Yeah, I mean, when I you kinda, left, was Vicky I Bishara still I was, there? Yeah, she was still there. All I right. mean, I well, just to answer your question about the uh -huh. reunion program, mm -hmm. uh, we were asked to do one for the uh, the year when it was the 50th anniversary of Cyprus Broadcasting Corporation. Okay. And uh, we said okay, and I mean, it was just unbelievably popular. I mean, we went on until sort of like one in the morning, and we didn't, we weren't able to play half of the requests that we got. Wow! And people said, you know, hey, why don't you do it again, and why don't you come, you know? But I, I, I've said from the beginning, you know, you, you can't turn the clock back. I mean, exactly. Uh, and that was. I mentioned earlier that people still come up to me and they tell me that they liked it and they remember it and how much it meant to them and this kind of thing. But, you know, I mean, they're all, they might be 50 years old now, you know, they're not going to sit, yeah, up, we are. sit at home more. on the radio. We're still the radio we still love the show. Yeah, so, I mean, it doesn't <laughs> quite work like that anymore. Um, and I did that program, as I said to you, until 1989. And then I left to help set up the first commercial radio station in Cyprus. Which one? Radio Proto? Which was Radio Proto, yeah. Yeah, I remember the one. And, yeah, uh, which actually in the end wasn't the first. We were beaten by a month or something, uh -huh. by another one. But, uh, so, but yeah, Vicky stayed on because she was actually, uh, she was a, a permanent uh, member of the CYBC staff, uh -huh. which I was not. Uh, and she carried on doing programs. I think eventually it was kind of phased out, you know, but uh, yeah. And people don't know, you also played in, uh, in, in, um on TV, right? Like an, as an actor. <laughs> yes, I did. Tell us uh, more about that. Okay, well, I was, uh, this was in 1975. Mm -hmm. um, I, okay, when I was at school and when I was at university, I'd done kind of, you know, theater stuff. Mm -hmm. And I got to know, in, in those days, uh, when I first, when I came to Cyprus, uh, CYBC had a theater department which of course is a you know, big, uh, it would have been a great luxury nowadays, but they did, and they had regular uh, TV theater productions that they did. And I got to know uh, the guy who was in charge, uh, Evis Gavrilidis. Oh, wow. Who later, in fact, the, that name. the yeah. program that, uh, the, pro the, the play that I did was his last production for Cyprus Broadcasting Corporation. While we were actually doing the rehearsals, uh. he was appointed as... Uh, general manager of the Cyprus Theatre Organization. And he knew that we talked and he knew that I was interested in theatre and this and that. <laughs> and uh, he was going to do a production of Brendan Behan's The Hostage. Oh yeah, that's the one that we were, I remember now. Now, uh, and this play, uh, for those who don't know it, basically uh -huh. it takes place in Ireland in the 1920s and it has certain resonance with Cyprus as well in that Correct. the story is about uh, the, the a group of patriots who kidnap a British soldier, a young British soldier, <laughs> hold him hostage to force the government to set some of the, their men free, you know, who mm -hmm. they, they've threatened to, to hang. Um, and Evis had the, the, the idea that I would be able to play the part of the 18-year-old the <laughs> British soldier. Uh, there was a certain, I, I think, there was a certain logic in it, in the sense that, uh, not only because kind of I looked a bit baby-faced as well, but because in a Greek language production, uh, everybody would be speaking absolutely perfect Greek, of course. Mm -hmm. In an English production, everybody would be speaking with an Irish accent, apart oh, wow. from the, the young London soldier. Okay? Right, right. So in the Greek version, the, the fact that I had been in Cyprus, what, for three years. Um, I could speak, I could have a little conversation with you, but I was by no means fluent. So this difference kind of came through as well. So mm -hmm. in the same way that in an English language production, you could tell simply between the Cockney accent of the soldier and the Irish accent of all the people in the house where he was kept, was kind of reflected in the fact that I was, the, I, I was speaking in a way which was slightly different from all of these 
others. And in fact, uh, I mean, I didn't even realize it at the time, but looking back, I mean, I was actually with what you would call sort of the, the real elite of the Cyprus theater in those days. I mean, mm -hmm. it was, you know, Despina Bembedeli, it was Telios Kafkaridis, it was Thanos oh, yeah. Petimeridis. I mean, it was all these people who later, and at the time were very well known, but they became even better known. And um, there was me playing the part of this uh, soldier. And the, it was a, quite a funny thing, because you mentioned uh, when I just met you that, uh, you know, I'm still looking okay, and I still got my hair. And no, I said, you well, look, I, you look, I said, well, I had to have my long hair cut. You look cut. really good. Well, it's very kind of you. I had to get my. I, I said I had to cut the long hair because when I came to Cyprus, it was like that. I know. I remember hair. you with the, the long. In fact, I have pictures. The rock star here. Very embarrassing pictures that I Not used to send out to with autographs on them. You know, I look like a girl. Anyway, uh, when I played the, to play the part of the soldier, uh -huh. Evie sent me three times to the barbers. Oh, really? He said, you've got to have your hair cut, you know, you can't play the part of a 1950s soldier looking like that. Right, right. So it was with great reluctance that I went to the barber, I came back, you know, and he said, no, that's not enough. Oh, wow. So I went again, you know, and I kind of tried to push it back, you know, behind my ears and all this. So he, and how many episodes And he actually were, made me go yet again. Was that one episode or were there many episodes? No, no, this was, this was a, it, it's a theatre play. Oh, a theatre play, it's a play, theater one play, play. yeah. Yes, one, so it was a one-off thing. Uh -huh. And the thing, uh, again, I, I told you, I got used to people saying, oh, I remember request time and you used to play records right, right. for me and my girlfriend and this kind of thing. The thing that really surprises me is that I still <laughs> find people who tell me they remember this play. Oh, really? And it was shown three times in, oh, wow. in Cyprus okay. and three times in Greece. I, you know, I mean, it's a play. I mean, I can't it's remember. It's called the, the hostage, yeah. The, yeah, the hostage. Okay. Enas Omiros. Enas Omiros, yeah. The other reason, the other reason why uh, it was kind of a, I wouldn't say clever, but why every Gavrilidis really probably thought of me, was that in the play there are actually songs, and the original Greek version of this play, when it was staged, I think in 1960 in Athens, uh -huh. the music for it was written by Mikis Theodorakis. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So. I mean, it has songs, very famous ones. The Yelasto is from this play. Really? The original, yes, oh, yeah, it's a yeah, translation yeah. of The Laughing Boy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, because I had also, he, he knew that I played the guitar and I sang, so, you know, it was kind of, okay, he, he's English, he can do this, his Greek isn't all that bad, and he can sing the songs too, so this is why I did it. And people still remember it, it's amazing. Well, that's another thing. Uh, I do remember you as a singer too. As a matter of fact, this song that came after 1974, you gave me a copy of the original, I'm so excited. It's called <laughs> Was an Island. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. I mean, you're just you with the guitar playing the song, and it was really, 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 and it really talks in the hearts of well, all Cypriots all over the world. It's a beautiful song, and I still hear it like, you're well, I have to, first of all, I have to give credit to the... I didn't write the words to this. Hmm. Um, the words were written by Lana de Pratog, who was in fact my boss at the Cyprus Broadcasting Corporation. She's uh -huh. the one who gave me the job. And uh, she wrote this as a poem following the, 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 the 1974 events. And uh -huh. it was published uh, in, a, in a government-backed uh, magazine. Wow. And she gave it to me and she said, you know, why don't you try and set this thing to music? You know, maybe we can get Cat Stevens to, you know, because uh -huh. he was the most famous Cypriot. But you did, write, you did write the music, though. I wrote the music. Yes, yeah, I set her it, poem. Yeah. I set her poem to uh -huh. music. I had been asked by uh, a film director at uh, CYBC, Andreas, uh, hmm, can't remember his name now, Konstantinidis who was working on a documentary about the return of the Greek Cypriot prisoners of war from Turkey. Mm -hmm. And he asked me if I would write some incidental music to go with this film. The song, yeah. Okay. In the meantime, I worked on Lana's poem and I was not all that happy with it, to be honest. Um, it was very, I mean, for me, it was a very kind of strange thing to do, you know, because as I've just been telling you, I mean, pop music was my thing. It was what I liked right. listening to. It's I, the songs that I was writing and singing. The, my job on the radio was playing pop music, you know. Uh -huh. And then I was given this very kind of, yeah, moving and emotional 
poem about the 1974 invasion. Uh -huh. And it was kind of a strange thing. It was quite, quite a difficult thing for me to get, you know, get my head around, first of all. Anyway, I, I, I did some work on it and I wasn't very happy. So I kind of gave up. Oh, really? Yeah. And then one day Lana said to me, you know, what did you do with that poem? And I said, well, you know, I did some, something, but I wasn't really happy with it. Oh, she said, well, I would like to hear it, you know, come and play me a bit. So I did, and she was quite enthusiastic about it. And she kind of pers persuaded me to <laughs> do the whole thing. I mean, it's a very long poem, as you, uh -huh. as you know. So I did that, and I was asked if I would go and play it um, at a gallery, an art gallery in Nicosia, which was owned by another guy who worked for the Cyprus Broadcasting Corporation. Wow. <laughs> and so I went and I played it, and in the audience that night was Andreas, the film director, who as soon as he heard this thing, he uh -huh. said, I don't want you to write me any music. I want this song for the film. Mm -hmm. And it was the song that gave the title to his film as well. It was an island, yeah. Yeah, it was an island. And so when the film was shown, which was actually me playing my guitar only, uh -huh. uh, it's one of those things where, you know, you sometimes think that people or the media is exaggerating when they say, you know, the phones never stop ringing and this kind of stuff. The phones never stop ringing, basically. I mean, <laughs> the, it was it was such a a big thing, and people were saying, "Where can we get this film, you know, this song?" So I actually went to Athens and I recorded it. The recording that I gave you. Yeah, you gave me a, a was copy. made in Greece. Yeah, because we didn't have this a again. Proper, is, we didn't have a proper right recording here. studio here. This so I had to go original. to Athens to do it, uh, and uh, eventually, you know. Due to popular demand, as they say, uh -huh. yeah, <laughs> uh, it came out on this record. Yeah. Wow. And 20 years later, uh -huh. I re-recorded it in a yes, you did, yeah, in a more in, in a sort of grandiose version, if you like. Um, as I say, it was a strange thing for me to do. I could never have imagined that my first record would be this kind of song. You know, it wasn't the stuff I was writing. It wasn't the style I was used to. But um, people's reaction was such that, you know, I mean, I was going around to schools and singing the right, right. To Beautiful the song, kids, yeah. you know. So I kind of have to acknowledge that, you know. Exactly, that's part of your it, career. It, it, it's did something for me. In absolutely. your life, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah. and this year, for the first time in, I don't know, maybe a dozen years, they actually showed the original documentary again. I know you gave me a copy on a DVD, that's, okay, and I really, yeah, really well, thank I, you. I didn't have it myself. I thought they'd lost it, actually. <laughs> and I, when, I mean that seriously, because yeah. uh, a lot of the archive of the Cyprus Broadcasting Corporation now, CYBC destroyed. is a really, really good place. They have a lot of stuff. They don't even, they know, do, what, they don't even know what they have. I think it's, it's like a treasure. You may be right, but there was a lot of stuff that was lost, because uh, the place where well, they yeah. had it was flooded. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah. they yeah. lost a lot of stuff. And in fact, the film, uh, the, the, the original video uh -huh. of the hostage, uh -huh. uh, they don't have the complete thing because part of it oh, was destroyed. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. So that was the that's the sort of the story of this uh, sure. of this thing, and I eventually did it again, uh, just to kind of. Uh, now another thing uh, people don't know, actually, a lot of people may know, is uh, you are also a journalist. Tell me about that. Your, car your journalistic career, like what happened after the singing and the songwriting and all of this. Well, tell us more about your journalistic career. Yeah, it's actually, career. That, has been, uh, that has actually gone on in parallel to everything else that I've been telling you. Uh -huh. So, in fact, what happened was that when I, ca I came to Cyprus, as I told you, in, in uh, July 1972, I got my job on the radio in October. So my first program was the 1st of October. 1972. And you said it was international first time. Yeah, yeah, that yeah I didn't yeah, know. That's right, yeah. Uh -huh. it, was that, it was request time, yeah. Right, right. And um, I also, I, I, the, the only English language newspaper in Cyprus at the time was the Cyprus Mail, which mm -hmm. is still uh, going yeah, strong. Yeah, it's been there for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, the oldest paper in Cyprus. And I wrote them a letter saying, uh, <laughs> I, I saw that you don't have a music column in your paper, and I'm from England, and I like music, you know, maybe I could write some reviews or whatever. And I what year, what year was that? That was I after no all your... Reply. Everybody knew who you are, though. I got no reply, yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, about a couple of months later, I was on TV uh -huh. uh, singing some of my songs. 
Uh -huh. And so sort of two days later, I got a reply from the paper saying, oh, we'd be interested if you want to write some stuff. Yeah. So, and I, did, I wrote a weekly column for the Cyprus Mail uh -huh. for, well, it must have been, I don't know, maybe six or seven years now. And then eventually, uh, the Cyprus Weekly, oh, yeah, which, as you know by its name, was comes weekly. out every Friday. Yeah, that's, right. yeah, that's it's another still coming out as well. Uh -huh. They said to me, um, "Why don't you come and write for us?" And instead of having this one column, we'll give you your own page. Oh wow! So how could I? How you could know, you turn that down? Yeah, refuse. Of yeah. course. Yeah. So I I started writing the music pages for the Cyprus Weekly, and then eventually I became the arts editor and then I became a deputy editor and then I was uh, headhunted uh, by somebody who wanted to set up a rival newspaper. Oh and, really? Um, yeah and we did and it went for two years and it didn't manage to, to get us be, the, ground, be yeah. the rival that he wanted it to be for the week. Uh -huh. But in the meantime uh, the same people in the same company got the franchise for Time Out. Oh. There's a Time Out Chicago, you mm -hmm. know. This. Oh, yeah, there is. There, yeah. Uh, well, this was from Time Out London, and uh, so we started Time Out Cyprus. Oh, wow. Uh, and I was the editor of Time Out Cyprus for six years. I spent four years in Brussels doing various things, and for the last five years, I've been the chief editor of a, a business magazine in Cyprus mm -hmm. called Gold, uh, which I'm very pleased to say is doing very well. And there's good, a website good. for it as well, you can see it. And what's is there like an online page people can find it? Well, the, 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 there is a there is a site where you can actually see back issues of the magazine. Mm -hmm. But there is also a website called Gold News, uh -huh. uh, which do. is which is kind of an updated daily. But it's business news and information and this kind of thing. So it, it's kind of a if you like a, a, an accompanying um, medium to go with the magazine. Because basically, as you know, no, you can't really be without an online presence. Exactly. Well, I want to thank you for this interview, John. <laughs> My pleasure. It was very, very interesting. And uh, again, thank you again for all those great memories, the request time that uh, I'm pretty sure everybody in Cyprus remembers that, especially the young people at, at that time, well, and yeah, now they're in they their 50s young, and 60s. They used to be older. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, the memories, you can never erase the memories. It's true. And I mean, I, as I always say to people, well, you know, uh, I was only doing my job, you know, and I was enjoying it. I mean, I always yeah, but you don't realize at the time how good the job was. I mean, That's how right. well, I, I, effective. Well, I knew that I was a lucky person. I mean, I And I want to also thank Vicky Pichara. She was also doing indeed, a yes, course, fantastic I mean, job. It was a real nice uh, pair of, of people as broadcasters who were real real nice you Very together had a lot of chemistry and even if we couldn't see you as the radio you can feel the energy and the chemistry of you guys had and like i said it was in english and in arabic and it was all over the middle east it was That's like right. yeah yeah no, it, was, it was a big thing in yeah. those days you know? yeah. and uh, people of course today they find it very strange the idea that people used to write letters to us because we had no phones correct there. there was no yeah. internet there was no email of course so I mean, it's, it was a whole different thing. And you thing. were getting hundreds and hundreds of letters. I remember Absolutely. you were saying one night, oh, I got so many to... to uh, Listen, I still meet people to you know, get a, yeah. who say, you know, I used to listen to your program, and my next kind of question is always with a bit of a worry, you know. Are they <laughs> going to say, yeah, and you never played those letters that I sent you. So <laughs> it was very difficult. Yeah, All right, thank you very much. Just to finish, did you want to give any message or anything to tell anything to the people listening or watching this um, interview? Well, you know, as I say, I, either in Cyprus or abroad, I, I always considered that I was very lucky to have arrived in Cyprus at a time when I think it was a time when if you had a little bit of talent or if you were slightly different in some way, you actually had the chance to find an outlet for it. And this is how I got myself on the radio. I would never have considered this if I stayed in England. Mm -hmm. uh, music was my hobby, you know, pop music was my passion. And to be able to actually do this for a living was just fantastic. So I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very pleased that, you know, people still remember these programs and they, they remember them in a very warm and, and, and kind way. And I'm glad that I could, you know, make even a little, a little contribution to making their teenage years, you know, enjoyable. All right, thank you, John. I want to shake your hand like I shake the hand with everybody. My pleasure. For our interview, thank man. You, Chris. And uh, I appreciate it. Thank All you very much. Thank you. That's a wrap. Thank you.